talking to you this morning about a moment of silence and a, and the silence of the moment. So Father, we come before you right now, God, and we ask you, Lord, that you would direct our minds, God, you would direct our hearts, God. And Father, what we speak, Lord, God, let it be from your throne, God. God, you've given us a message, Lord, and we pray, Father God, that the hearers, God, would receive it today, God. I pray, God, your Holy Spirit, Father God, in their house, God. God, in each and every house, God, that they would sense your presence right now, God, where they're at, God. We just honor you, God, and we praise you. Thank you, Lord. We're going to be looking in Matthew uh, 27. We're going to be reading 50 and 51. But before we go there, go ahead and turn there. But I want you to look at this title again, Moment of Silence and Silence of the Moment. A moment of silence, what was happening in that moment. A moment of silence, what was happening in that moment. And silence in the moment, what could not be heard in the moment of that silence. What could not be heard in the moment of the silence. They sound very similar, but they're not the same. Because we can be focusing sometimes on the moment, or we can be focusing on the silence. But I want you to understand that God will speak to you in the moment of the silence in the silence of the moment. And I want you to understand that because I want you to take you here to this scripture in Matthew 27 and 50 and 51. Thank you, Lord. Father, we praise you, Jesus. It says, And Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twine from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And I just want you to look at that for a moment. What happened? The curtain of the veil that separated man and God was rent in twine. It was rent in two from the bottom, 
or from the top to the bottom. And we have to look here also that there was a great quake that rent, that knocked the rocks around, knocked them down, destroyed them. It pulled them out of place. It doesn't say what size they were. It just says it removed them. It moved them from where they were sitting. And if you go with me to the next page over, I would assume, in Matthew 28, and we're going to be reading 1 through 6. And so here we see where it talks about, it says, let's just start beginning. In the, I'm reading in here at the beginning of it. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. There's another earthquake, not the same one. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not, ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. And I want you to pay attention right here to this verse. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And I just want to make a point here on this. In this quake, in this moment of silence, or in this silent moment, in this time, where we don't seem to emphasize so much time on this because we're observing through this season either the crucifixion or the resurrection, but we forget about what happened in between. We forget that our God in a moment of time in the quake of earth by the power of God breaks through into a relationship with you and I. And then we see where he rises up from the tomb, where the rock is removed of another quake. And we see where life is not only life given to Christ, but life given to us because it represents resurrecting power. But there's something that goes on between here for us to receive that resurrecting power. It's not that we have to do anything, but we have to realize of the attitude in which we receive between the two quakes and the moment of silence or the silent moment. Because we see different players, and I don't, I, I'm very careful to use the word players, but we see different people in different roles here. We see the women that followed after Christ, Mary, Mary Magdalene, and, and the, the women who followed after, those that were going to bring spices and everything and was, uh, would fix the body of Christ, those that went to visit the tomb, those that went to look at the sepulcher, the women who continually looked for him and looked unto him, they trusted him, but something happened in, in this, during this time. They were separated from him, but they still were looking. They were still caring. They were still... Um, Remembering, and where we see here, we see Joseph of Matthias, of Amathias. We see Joseph here. It says he was looking in here in this quiet time. He was looking and waiting for the kingdom. And so we see him looking to the kingdom and observing Christ as of that king, as being that king. And it says he goes to Pilate and begs the body of Christ. And Pilate gives him the body of Christ and he takes him and he wraps him and he buries him in a tomb which was uh, which he had chiseled out for himself, but yet he made place for Christ. He was looking for this soon coming king, this kingdom. So you have one looking for him, one observing and honoring him, but yet we look over here and we see the disciples that are scattered. We see them in a dark place. We see them in a place to where, as they're walking on, in the book of Luke, they're walking down the road with him as Jesus appears later to them. And, he, and he's talking with them and they don't recognize who he is. And then they say, don't you know what has happened today? Don't you know? Are you a stranger from here? And so they're walking down the road of Emmaus with him. 
And so we have to look here and, and see what their conversation is about. And they begin go on and they talk about a good man or a great prophet, but they never identify him as the Son of God. Yet in Luke chapter, let's go there just for a minute. And it's, it's in Luke 24. Let's turn there for a minute. I'm throwing a lot in here this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just read a little bit if, that, if that's okay. In verse 16, let's start reading there. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. Remember I just said they, they were walking down the road with him, but they were unable to see him. In verse 17, and he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that you have that ye have one to another? What are you talking about? What are you sharing right now as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass? There are in these days, 19, and he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in the deed, mighty in deed, and word before God, and all the people, 20, and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today, in the third day since these things were done, yea, and certain... And certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even as the woman had said. But him they saw not. Now I want you to listen to this. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And this would be my text today. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Because the thing about it is it doesn't matter where you're coming from, whether you're looking for the kingdom, whether you're a follower of Christ, or whether you're unbelief or you're a believer, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the plans of God. God has a plan, and He's going to make every provision to fulfill that plan. And I believe this time that we're living in right now, this thing that we're facing right now, this COVID-19 that we're looking at, I want to say this today, that there is a plan and there is a purpose today. And I'm not trying to make this as an occasion. I'm not trying to take an opportunity today to address the situation. But I want you to know that he has a plan. And it doesn't matter where you're at. And it doesn't matter what your unbelief is or your belief is. What matters is he's got a plan. And we have to align with that plan. We need to be seeking his face. I keep saying that over and over. But I want to continue to challenge you to stay in the word. I sound like a broken record. But it's the only thing that's going to keep you in this time. It's the only thing to keep you in unity, to keep you in power, to keep your eyes upon Him, to keep your eyes open to what the Spirit is saying to the church today. I want you to understand that. So in this time, let's don't be as, I use the word lightly, I hope. Jesus was pretty strong in the King James calling them fools. But at the same time, let's not be ignorant of what's going on around us. Let's not be so involved in the battles and the things that's, that's wrapping around us on our jobs or wherever we are, just in your own life. I think some of you today, as I, I'm going through and I'm experienced, there's some areas in my life that's being exposed in my life 
It's something different when you're alone and it's God and God only speaking to you. you there's things that God begins to reveal that you've not even noticed or, be, or are aware of things in your life that hinder you. But God has some things that He's going to do and God has some things He wants you to do. And so it's important, not that we line up with any of these three here. We should be looking for the kingdom. We should be in observance for, of Him and we should be waiting upon Him. But at the same time, let's don't take on this despair. Let's don't take on fear. Let's don't become so desperate we begin to question his word because his word is true. And I like that because even the angel said, is it, isn't it, he, didn't he speak and say that he would arise? And Jesus has arisen today and his word is true and nothing changes. His word for will ever be. There is nothing that will distract it and nothing move it. His word continues to march on. And at this time, I want you to understand, this is a time that His Word is marching on, that we need to embrace His Word. And I don't want to disrespect at all the, 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 what Jesus went through at the cross whatsoever, or I don't want to disrespect the resurrected life, but I think sometimes we get caught up in the celebration of it all, that we don't live out the resurrection life. We don't live by the benefits that God has sent us or given us, but yet we live somewhere in the silent time, but in that silent time, we can get lost as well. But Jesus continued to do. Jesus continued to accomplish. The curtain was rent and twine. Grace, the new covenant, our relationship with him, because of his shed blood, because of his victory, because his willingness to face things that we needed to face, he became that substitute for us. All this was transpiring. It didn't just stop at the cross in that moment when the earth quaked, but it continued through that silent time from the time that the tomb, when the, the, the rock was rolled away, it still continued. There were captives that were set free. There were witnesses that, that came alive. You know, many things began to happen. And God continued to deal with these people. Like uh, Joseph of uh, Arimathea, he still was dealing with them. He still caused his faith to continue because Joseph had his eyes looking for the soon coming king. He trusted God at his word. Think about that. He trusted God at his word. You had his Messiah was crucified, was in the grave, but he trusted God at his word. And he continued to honor Christ as the Messiah. And we see the ladies that continued to give spices, continued to observe those things as King of King and Lord of Lords. So I wanna encourage you today that we didn't get caught in what we might call the moment of silence. When it feels like God's not speaking to you, God's not talking to you. It seems like you're dealing with these things that he's drawing out of you. And it's just like, where, where are you, God? But God's right in the middle of it. He's the one stirring it all up. He's the one mixing it up. He's the one calling it forth. And if we're not careful, we're going to look at the situation that we're faced with. And sometimes that situation may be just us. And we're looking at the situation we're faced with and we're blaming everybody else and looking for excuses everywhere around us. But yet, the reality is it's just you and God. It's just you and God. And so in those silence, don't let the moment pass you. But in that moment, let God do a work in your life because he continues to do a work in your life. He's revealing to us as the church where we lack in, what we need to be doing, He's restructuring what we're doing. I'm not saying he's being restructured. We are being restructured. We've taken on habits. We've taken on uh, doctrines. We've taken on all kinds of things throughout the years. And God is cleaning house now. He's revealing to us now. That's what's going on right now. You can say, but the world, they're dying. And, and people are dying. And people are sick. And our hospitals and all, all of our, our, our pleasures and all of our luxury is, is in question. But God is still working in the church. The church has to come to the place to where it's healed in order to administer healing. And I believe that's what God is doing by the revealing. He's creating healing in us. So I want to challenge you once again. Don't forget this moment. Don't allow this moment to pass by. 
but know that God is working on your behalf. And the same Christ who gave himself for you, who we are in Christ with, who we have been crucified with, he also arose and gives us resurrecting power. That means the power to walk according to the Spirit of God, to walk in this life. We don't have to be all spiritual, but we need to come to the place of being able to encounter situations in life and allowing the Spirit to live in us and flow through us. But I just want to challenge you with this this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Don't forget, in the moment, in the moment, God is still working. Let's all bow our heads. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this moment, God, for such a time as this, God, for a season, God, as we're in, Lord. God, I know there's a lot of losses, Father God. There's a lot of frustration and a lot of fear, God, a lot of anxiety, God. But Father, it doesn't stop you from working, Lord. It doesn't stop you from going forward, Lord. It doesn't stop you. It doesn't even cause you to hesitate, Lord. God, you have a plan and your plan will march on, God. No matter what condition we are, God, your plan will march on, God. And I pray, God, we as the church, God, would arise, Lord. And Father God, we would recognize, God, that you are all power, Lord God. And no matter what situation we face, God, we can count on you. And Lord God, there are those, Father God, who may not know you today, Lord. I pray for them today, God. God, I put my trust in you today, God, and I pray that they will put their trust in you today, God. I pray, God, they would come the way, God, Father God, that you made a way, Lord. It says you made a way, God, when it seemed to be no way, Lord. God, you died at Calvary, God. It says while we were yet in sin, Lord, you died for us, Lord. Lord, you gave yourself, Lord. You loved us, God. And Father, we thank you, Jesus, for that. It's not just us, Father, it's for the world, God. All who believe in him, God. You said if we confess with our mouth, Lord, and believe in our hearts, Lord, God, that we can be saved, God. And I'm asking right now, Father God, that you would minister to them right now, God, in their house and where they're at, Lord. I pray, we, I ask you to pray this with me today and to just say, asking the Lord, Lord, forgive me, for I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And I thank you, Lord, for loving me and dying for me. And I thank you, Lord, that everything, my past and my sins and everything is behind me. It's thrown into the sea of unforgetful, or unforgetful is not to be remembered against me no more. Today's a new day. The Bible says if you confess Jesus Christ and you believe in his name and you've done this, it says old things have passed away and all things have become new. This is a new fresh day today. This is truly resurrecting power. It positions you for God to do a great work in your life, to be a comfort, to be a strength, to be a hope. In this time that we're living in right now, we need that hope. We need Christ more than ever. Not just a hope for a word of encouragement, a supernatural hope, one that he can only give. And it's through Christ. Because he arose and lives, I can live. God bless you.